Hey, welcome to Repeat Last Action in PowerPoint. I'm Les McCarter from Power Up Training, and I'm going to teach you the subtle tricks to undo, redo, and undo, undo, plus two tools to help you copy the format of objects and animations. So let's go. To get us grounded, here's a quick overview before we dig deep into undo, which reverses the last command, or what I call my last mistake. Redo, which will undo the undo by reversing the last undo command. And we'll see some curious changes as hinted with the asterisk. And then the closely related repeat command that will repeat exactly the last action and only the last action. So let's dive in with undo. Once you issue an undo action, it will undo the last command done. And it can travel back in time by letting you do multiple undos over and over to go farther and farther back. Let's see it in action. We are in PowerPoint's normal view, and I need some actions to undo. First, I will type in some text, and then my second action will be to color it red. And my third action is to underline the text. So, I'll issue the first undo command. There are several methods, but we'll start off with the fastest by using the keyboard shortcut of Control plus the Z key, which undoes my last action of reversing out the underline. If I repeat the undo command of Control, holding down the Control key, then hitting the Z key, I undo the text coloring of red. And when I repeat it a third time, the undo will reverse out all of the typing. Undo and typing is a bit fuzzy on what actually gets undone. Let me quickly type in three lines of text for an example. And let's also see a second way to undo besides the keyboard. And that is the undo icon on the quick access menu, which is found on the top left of PowerPoint. When you click the upside down arrow, PowerPoint shows a list of previous commands. I'm going to select typing. And when I do, then not just the last line, but all three lines of type text is undone. So let's see a different scenario where I type two lines of text quickly and then wait for about five seconds before typing the third line. And what we will see is that the pause between typing is seen by PowerPoint as two separate actions, and each can be undone with two sets of undo commands. The length of pause between typing is a bit fuzzy how PowerPoint interprets it. It sometimes is frustrating for PowerPoint to undo too much typing, but we can kind of fix that in a few moments. So here's a summary. You can do undo with either the keyboard command of control plus C or the quick access icon. It will undo the last command. For typing, the group of last typing is a bit fuzzy. Basically, if you continuous type, the collection of type text will be treated as a single action. You can also undo up to 20 previous actions to walk back in time by either repeating the undo command over and over or you can use the mouse to show the history from the icon and drag down the list as far back as you want to go. It's possible to change PowerPoint setting to allow more than the default 20, but I find this almost always enough as long as you save your work regularly so that you can revert back to a previously saved version if you really get lost. Lastly, the list of previous undos are kept with each working presentation, meaning that the last command will not apply to other presentations that you might have open, nor will they be kept when you close the file. Moving from the undo, let's look at the simple repeat command. Repeat is very easy to understand. It will repeat the last action and only the last action, meaning stringing multiple repeat commands together will just repeat the last action. Let's see it in action. I will type in the text of hello. And what is the last action? Let's see as I do the command to redo of control plus Y. And the last command is just the letter O. 
Now, if I repeat the redo command, I just get a bunch of O's. Let's undo this multiple times and try another repeat example. I'll type in two lines and then format the first one by making it red, and then the second command will be to underline it. When I repeat the last command on the second line, not surprisingly, it will only do the last command of underline. I'm not able to go back to the second previous command to turn it red. Still, it is useful, such as here, where I make one line of text centered, and then I can repeat the center command by going back to the second line and doing repeat. Or where I insert a circle shape and do repeat multiple times to have PowerPoint repeat the insertion of the same circle object with the same dimensions. But not everything can be repeated. Watch as I add an arrow, and then I'm gonna add a second arrow, now focus on this action of rotating one of the arrows and see how it does not repeat. In fact, the repeat icon is dimmed out, giving me the hint that it's not a repeatable action. Here's a quick side trip. If your version of PowerPoint is not showing the repeat icon, it can be turned on by clicking the Customize Quick Access Toolbar and checkmarking the Redo command. So, in summary, the repeat command can be issued from the keyboard with Control plus the Y key or the icon, which can be turned on if it's missing for versions of PowerPoint 2013 and up. The repeat command will only repeat the last command over and over and over. There is no multiple history repeats, and not all commands can be repeated, although most from the home ribbon menu will work. Here's another side trip. The third method of executing the repeat command is to use the F4 function key found at the top of your keyboard. However, many modern computers will have that top row of keys do double duty, such as pausing music. So you may need to use a combination of the FN key to toggle the F4 key. The last of our repeat last action collection is the redo command. It is similar to the previously demonstrated repeat command, but is tied to the undo command. It's basically undoing the undo command series using the same control Y or F4 key or icon. And when you run out of the undos to undo, then the redo command switches to the repeat command. Let's give it a run through. Here's what I'm doing, creating some actions that can then be undone, and then we'll do the redo to undo the undos. I'm adding some text, an object, then some text again, another object, and then text and an object. I'm gonna pause for a quiz. What happens next after adding the objects if I do a repeat? Answer, PowerPoint adds the same last object again. So now let's do some deletes of random objects out of order. Click and delete, click and delete, click and delete. Now I will undo the deletes with the keyboard control plus Z three times to bring back the deleted items. Let's go and redo with the action icon. Watch closely. The icon look has changed to the redo icon and after clicking three times to redo, it runs out of undos to redo and then goes dim. So there are some subtle indicators with the icon hinting that it can one, repeat, two, redo, or three, it can't do anything as nothing is available as indicated by the dim icon. So in summary, the redo command will undo previous undos. It uses the same command as repeat, and once all the undos have been undone, the icon will dim and all future icons will simply be repeats. So those are handy commands, but they don't solve the problem of wanting to repeat all the formatting from one object to the next. So to fix the repeat format issue, we need to look at the painter tool. There are two painter tools that will copy the full formatting, one for general style and the other for specialized bullet animation.
Let's take a look. In this example, we have two text items in different fonts. Let me go ahead and change text one to have an additional set of changes of green and underline. If we do the simple repeat command on the second set of text, then it will only do my last command of underline. But I want to copy all the formatting. So to do that, I need to select the source object or text for the style I want to copy. And in the home ribbon menu, I will find the format painter icon. Click it once and the next text I click will inherit all the formatting changes such as color, size, font family, and more. This will also work with objects. Here, I will increase the line size of the triangle border. And then after making sure the triangle object is selected, I will then again click the format painter icon on the home ribbon and apply it to the next triangle, which will then inherit all the formatting of the first triangle. And for PowerPoint, style formatting can be applied to like family objects, such as different types of shapes. Triangle to star. And now for a speed trick. Formatting groups of objects by double clicking the format painter icon. Once double click, the painter icon takes over the look of your pointer cursor. And now it will paint with each click until you either hit the escape key or click the painter icon again. There's a second painter tool, but it is tied to the animation tools found on the ribbon menu. Animation is the way that bullet points or objects float into view when running a presentation. Look for our YouTube video dedicated to animation. But each animation can have a variety of settings attached to them. The specialized animation painter will take all of those settings and apply them to another set of bullet points using the same method of clicking once or twice to do multiple sets of animation painter applications. So to summarize, there are two types of painter tools to copy the formatting, the more general format painter and the more specialized animation painter for slideshow animation. The commands are to select the source object, click the painter tool and click on the target, or to do multiple animations, double click the painter tool and click on as many objects as needed to format them. When done, either hit the escape key or click the painter tool again. There you go. Now you know everything you need to know about undo, redo, and undo, undo, plus the two formatting tools for copying styles and animation. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Subscriptions help greatly in supporting our effort to make more free videos for you. And if you have suggestions for other PowerPoint training, leave them in the comments below. And lastly, if you want to become a PowerPoint expert, do visit us on the web at our website of power-up.training for our full free training on PowerPoint. Until next time, go power up.